Okay, so I thought I could make one additional video uh, covering pyruvate carboxylase um, and how that can play a role in the carbon tracing. Um, just because I've gotten a few emails uh, with students asking how this plays a role and how we can account for this in terms of if you got a question asking for pyruvate carboxylase and stuff like that. So first I wanted to go over the reaction, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through uh, like an example, I'll just make up an example and see how that can play a role in carbon tracing or how you can count the, or track the carbons if you use pyruvate carboxylase instead, okay? So again, we have this pyruvate carboxylase reaction and before I draw the reaction, it's helpful to understand what we're doing is it's in its name. And I think it's helpful a lot of times when we're looking at the names of these things to just physically think what the name means. So think about it like this. What we're doing is we're taking pyruvate right over here and we're carboxylating it, pyruvate carboxylase. So the idea here behind pyruvate carboxylase is all we're doing is we're adding a carboxyl group to our pyruvate molecule. And now you might say, well, how do we do that? So if I draw out the reaction over here, you're, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. So we're gonna draw, draw it out like this, okay? It's in its name, okay? We're gonna pyruvate over here and I'm gonna just draw out pyruvate. And we're gonna go like this and I'm just gonna draw out oxaloacetate a little bit more in a suggestive manner. Hopefully it'll be easier for you guys to see, but it's the exact same thing that's drawn over here, okay? CH2, we got the carbonyl, oops. This is a CH2, this carbonyl and the CO minus. So if I'm looking at pyruvate and this is pyruvate and then this is oxaloacetate, okay? Notice how, again, if we're ever not sure about what's going on between the reactants and the products or the starting material and what we're getting at the end, you can just count the carbon and see what's similar and different and then see where the difference is, okay? So I noticed that on this side, we have this carboxylic acid followed by the carbonyl. So that's probably a good place where I can start counting my carbons, okay? So I'm gonna start over here and we're gonna start counting our carbons right over here, similar right over here, similar right over here. So what I'm doing, and you can see over here, I have this fourth carbon on oxaloacetate that pyruvate doesn't have. So if you think about it, comparing pyruvate on and oxaloacetate, I, all I'm doing is I'm adding a carboxyl, a carboxyl group to the methyl side of pyruvate and making oxaloacetate. And that's what pyruvate carboxylase gets its name from, okay? And the way that it does this again, is it takes this bicarbonate molecule. So this is gonna be the carbon source right over here. And what we're gonna do again, remember when you put two things together, that's a ligase. So we're gonna have to use ATP energy to put that together. So all I'm gonna do over here is I'm just gonna put, maybe I can erase this or actually I'll leave it in, okay? We'll go ATP right over here, and then that's going to be ADP plus PI, okay? So we're going to harness that ATP energy, and we're going to now put that bicarbonate onto the methyl end of pyruvate. So that fourth carbon is going to be right over here on the bicarbonate. And what we're going to do is we're going to add it right over here to form oxaloacetate, and that's where pyruvate carboxylase gets its name, okay? So um, this is fine and dandy, but you guys might be asking, well, how does this play a role if you've got a problem? Uh, in your worksheet or on the exam, how is this gonna work out? So the idea here is just like in the worksheet, so we, we had a problem where we, we, let's just make up a problem and we're gonna say that 50%, um, okay, so I'm gonna just start it out like this. We're gonna say that 100% of my molecules are gonna be radio labeled at this methyl carbon, okay? So 100% of them, they're starting out radio labeled at this methyl carbon. And now what I'm gonna tell you guys is I'm gonna conduct two different experiments. In the first experiment, half of my radio label is going to go through the TCA cycle like this, okay? Then, so if let's say instead of, so because maybe percentages are a little bit confusing. So if I'm starting out with 100 pyruvate molecules, 50 of them are going to go through PDH and the TCA cycle. And then I'm going to have the other 50, right? Because that adds up to 100 molecules, okay? The other 50 are going to go through pyruvate carboxylase to form oxaloacetate directly. Okay, so now let's see what ends up happening if we're radio labeling that methyl group. Well, if we've already seen from a previous video, if we radio label the methyl group, well, remember 50% of it's going this way, so 50% of our radio label is going to be on the methyl group. Then what we're going to do again is we're going to combine an unlabeled oxaloacetate with acetyl CoA. And I've said this many times, so I'm not going to just say it over here. We're just going to basically 
radio label it right over here. Okay, there's a previous video which I explained why that one's the radio label in case you want to see it. But we're, I'm just going to go faster so to save time. Okay. And again, remember, oh yeah, I should probably just say this. So we're starting off with 50 on all these steps, just like this. So when the radio label splits, it's going to now be 25 and 25. And I don't know why it auto corrects me. So here we go, 25 and 25. And then what we're going to do over here again is going to be 25 and 25. Okay, so now we have radio label 25 and 25 like that. Okay, and now what we're saying, what we're doing is we're gonna now have the other 50 molecules gonna, we're gonna radio label it directly through pyruvate carboxylase and we're gonna see where that radio label ends up. Well, if you think about it, we just saw over here in this reaction over here that if our methyl group is radio labeled, where our radio label is gonna end up is going to be on this third group if we're counting the carbons, right? The three and the three uh, overlap with each other, okay? so. We're saying that the CH, if we radio labeled the methyl group and we went through pyruvate carboxylase, our CH2 group would take that radio label. So if we start off with 50% going through pyruvate carboxylase, 50% of our radio label is going to then end up on that CH2 group. Okay. So all we're going to do now is we're going to just account for this in this case. And if you notice over here, our CH2 group, we already said that we had 25% of the radio label um, by going through the TCA cycle. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna add this additional 50% to this 25%. So we're gonna have a total of 75%, okay? And it might not seem so clear, so I'm gonna just draw out all the pyruvate molecules, okay? I'm gonna just draw out all the, or all the oxaloacetate molecules, okay? We're just gonna draw them out like this. I'm gonna just draw out three of them. So we'll go like this and then I'll lasso it. Copy, paste. That makes my life so much easier. And then paste. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to erase this so that you guys don't get distracted. Okay. So now what we're going to do again, we said that 50% of it went through the TCA cycle. So when we saw our radio label split over here, we're going to get 25 and 25 on the inside two carbons. Okay. And this is from going through the TCA cycle. So we're going to say 25% here, 25% here, TCA cycle. And then again, because the other 50% of it went through directly through pyruvate carboxylase and we directly converted pyruvate to oxaloacetate, meaning that that methyl group is going to uh, be this CH2 group that already that, that CH2 group right over here, or maybe it's easier to see it over here. So again, this methyl group over here becomes the CH3 group, or the CH2 group on oxaloacetate. So 50% of our radio label is gonna end up on that same carbon that was from here, okay? So in the end, so this is from pyruvate carboxylase. So in the end, a total of 75% of our radio label ended up on this carbon, okay? And 25% of it ended up on the carbonyl. But it's important that we can distinguish that well, actually 50% of it came through this way and the other 50% of it came through this way, okay? So I hope this makes a little bit more sense. And in the discussion worksheet, instead of it going, instead of radio labeling the methyl carbon, we radio label the, the carbonyl carbon, okay? Um, so try that out on your own and try to see where the radio label is going to end up, uh, both going through the TCA cycle and, go, and also going through pyruvate carboxylase. Okay, and you should hopefully be able to see that our radio label, if we put on the carbonyl carbon, if it goes, if it goes through the TCA cycle, we're going to have these outside two radio labels, and that's going to be 25 and 25 each. And then if it goes through uh, pyruvate carboxylase and our carbonyl carbon is radio labeled, we're going to still have the carbonyl carbon radio label, so that's going to have the 50% over here. And notice how if, if we were, so I'm kind of superimposing stuff on each other over here. But again, so we're gonna get 25 and 25. If This is just for if we radio labeled the carbonyl carbon. We're gonna get 25 and 25 over here. And then for the uh, carbonyl carbon on oxaloacetate, we're gonna get 50% through pyruvate carboxylase, okay? And notice how none of these carbons overlap with each other. So it's not that we, can, we can't really add these percentages anymore because they're not really overlapping anymore for, the, for this next case, 
or maybe I should color code it um, so that you guys can see that it's a different example. So uh, ignore, so what I just wrote out, I'll do it in a different color. So if, if instead radio labeled, if instead we radio labeled the carbonyl carbon, okay, so if we radio labeled this one, what we're going to end up seeing, and we did the same setup, 50% goes through pyruvate dehydrogenase and 50% goes through pyruvate carboxylase. You would see that at the end of the TCA cycle, you're going to get uh, 25 and 25 on the outside two carbons because now we're going to see our signal split over here, 25 and 25, okay? And then in this case, going through pyruvate carboxylase, we're going to see the, if the carbonyl is radiolabeled, the carbonyl is going to stay radiolabeled, okay, on, oxal on oxaloacetate. So we're going to see another 50% here. So this is going to be 25, 25, and 50, okay? And this is, again, I just put like a second example without like erasing everything. The, the example, if we instead radio labeled the carbonyl carbon, that's, a, that's assuming that we're not radio labeling the methyl carbon. So that was just a completely different example. I should have probably prefaced that. But uh, feel free to email me or post a comment on this and I'll look at it if anyone's a little bit confused.